Hi, I'm Ian Young from the fabulous Department of Hebrew, Biblical and Jewish Studies at the University of Sydney. There are many English translations of the Bible. Here, for example, is the famous King James Version or Authorised Version of 1611. In fact, this is my family Bible. It was awarded to my grandmother, Mary Armstrong, in 1898 for acing Sunday school. It says in the front, actually, that she ruled Sunday school so much that she didn't lose a single mark in the subject of Bible knowledge. Now, that's genetics, ladies and gentlemen. On the other hand, here's the modern, well-regarded, new revised standard version of the Bible. This is kind of like the great-grandchild of the King James Version of the Bible. So why are there so many translations of the Bible? What's going on? Well, one of the reasons why there are so many translations of the Bible is that over the years we've come to know the world of the Bible a lot better. In 1611, the translators of that classic King James Bible found in 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 28, the Hebrew word umikveh, or in older pronunciation, umikweh. Okay, so the U is and, but the mi could be from, it could be a noun former. And what is a mikweh or a quay? In the end, the King James translators came up with this translation. Let's have a look. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt and linen yarn. The king's merchants received the linen yarn at a price. So they thought that mikwe was linen yarn. This is based on the fact that in Hebrew and other related languages, similar looking words mean things like cords or threads, something like that. In the 19th century, archaeologists discovered the records of the mighty Assyrian Empire. Among the things we learned were the names of the kingdoms that they fought against and conquered. Some of these are pretty familiar, like Israel and Judah. But another one of the kingdoms that they came across and fought against was a kingdom called Quay. One of the most powerful of the Assyrian kings was Shalmaneser III. Behind me is a picture of the time in 841 BCE when one of the kings who bowed before Shalmaneser III was Jehu, king of Israel. Just two years after this event, the target of Shalmaneser's empire was the kingdom of Quay. So now, with our knowledge of that ancient kingdom, the New Revised Standard Version has this translation for 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 28. Solomon's import of horses was from Egypt and Quay, and the king's traders received them from Quay at a price. Not a linen garment in sight. If you want to learn more about the Bible and its world, including the Hebrew language, why not join us in the Department of Hebrew, Biblical and Jewish Studies at the University of Sydney.